Welcome to Tokyo Institute of Technology. We are one of the uh, national supercomputing centers in Japan. Uh, currently, we have the second fastest uh, supercomputer uh, in Japan. We're rank, currently rank, rank 22nd in the world. Uh, we have been high as, as high as uh, fourth uh, back in 2010 when we had the first uh, introduction of our Tsubame 2 machine onto the list. Uh, of course, uh, the machine is uh, will age, and not just as a resource center, as a uh, research center in supercomputing. Uh, we have uh, a number of groups, including mine, uh, tens of people that are uh, working with uh, both our industrial partners and also re research labs, such as those in DOE, like Livermore, Oak Ridge, so forth, uh, in that we are striving to uh, uh, elevate our uh, performance to the next generation. So we're planning for a Tsubame 3 update uh, or renewal of our machine in 2016. And uh, our Tsubame KFC machine, which you see here, is a prototype uh, of the uh, Tsubame 3. And uh, one of the most important property is to basically work on power, because right now power is the limit on how much uh, capacity we can afford in a system, especially in a university environment like ours, we cannot afford a 20 megawatt data center. In fact, the capacity we have uh, on normal operation is about one megawatt, and then at maximum we can afford only two megawatts. So uh, how do we, uh, and we, and university is not gonna give us any more electricity. So how do we basically try to grow capacity, be at the top class, despite this shortcoming in our facilities? Well, so the, we really have to innovate in terms of our power performance, and KFC uh, is an attempt to basically try to minimize energy, uh, minimize the cooling power required, uh, be able to do uh, smart energy management, be able to uh, govern and manage the machine, the job scheduling and so forth, in order to uh, attain the maximum efficiency of the machine. Uh, and that we have been very successful in this endeavor uh, such that uh, we were ranked number one on the Green 500 back in 2013 and also in two, again in 2014. And on the top 500 list, we as that was announced just uh, uh, this morning, at least on that list, we're still number, the most uh, power efficient machine in the world. Although the Green 500, the list may differ a little bit. Uh, the technology we use here is to use uh, immersive cooling in a partnership with uh, Green Revolution Cooling. And that's and as you can see, you know, uh, this guy floating on you know, this, he's floating in oil. Uh, he's not being fried, so he can tell that the oil temperature is not that high. So you know, it's not high enough to fry this fry this person. So it doesn't really become a fried duck by any means. But still, it's warm. Uh, it's it's a, it's about 35 to 45 degrees Celsius temperature. So the server being immersed, uh, the temperature is about. Uh, uh, of the liquid itself uh, it will stay in that range. Uh, because the fluid, in this case oil, has so much capacity, uh, thermal capacity, even with the immense heat that's uh, exerted from the server itself, especially the chips, the, the temperature uh, gradient uh, remains fa fairly small. So, um, and also that allows the chips to sense that remain very cool. So the chips, like the GPUs, we have a comparative GPU. Uh, of, each of these nodes have four GPUs, so it's a very dense architecture. And each of the GPUs is a comparative air cooling configuration. We have a comparative node. Uh, the T case of such a node will rise to something like 80 degrees Celsius. Whereas being immersed, uh, the temperature remains at 45 de 40, 45 degrees Celsius, even at full load. So this allows the uh, temperature to remain low, even with high load, this allows for the chips to operate at nominal temperature at, uh, and also be able to, uh, for example, do clock or voltage uh, boost when, re when required to uh, even uh, have higher, higher performance, but also keep the components temperature low to allow to, um, uh, will allow to have a much, much uh, longer life expectancy, that is, it will keep the temperature operating at a really nominal environment under some uh, sealed, you know, and so there's no part of a component touching oxygen. 
so uh, there was no corrosion going on. There are no moving parts, so we didn't get any vibration. Now, uh, we don't know if Tsubame 3 will actually use immersive cooling, but definitely it will be using hot water cooling. It will have other innovative features uh, that, will, uh, that will accommodate a lot of the cloud and big data features into the machine. Uh, some of those features you may see in the cloud have never been incorporated into uh, the supercomputer uh, that you will see for the first time in Tsubame 3, such as judicious use of component uh, of, uh, of uh, uh, container technology, uh, uh, various types of uh, facilitation of uh, uh, massive use of machine learning algorithms that will facilitate in the machine, uh, and so forth. So I wish, so Tsubame 3 will again become Will likely become a very innovative machine. It will have a high, not only high performance, not only it will be a very high efficient, but also it will cover much, even much broader range of applications than what you've seen with Tsubame 2. And I hope that will set much higher standard for the HPC community and its uh, strive for convergence with big data and cloud and cloud infrastructure. So, that's my spiel. Okay. okay thanks. Any any questions? Yeah. Uh, one question. Sure. The, that you lower the temperature, has that influence on the speed? Ah, yeah, so by, by lowering temperature, there are two effects. One effect is when you have lower temperature, the leakage current goes down by, by the nature of the semiconductors. So, that, so the static leakage goes down. Also, by lowering the temperature, uh, you can clock boost high, at high, to higher frequency because uh, typically these, uh, these uh, clock boosting uh, frequency and actually voltage boosting uh, it's decided based on the, the limits of a T-case temperature. The opposite happens, it's actually thermal throttling is the complete opposite of this effect. When the chip temperature goes too high, the, you know, it slows down in order to prevent the chip from being damaged. So by, so by encasing, by having extremely high thermal capacity in terms of liquid, close uh, and you know, using liquid cooling to cool the chips, be it immersive or direct contact, this allows you to attain much higher performance and, of course, much higher stability based on these two uh, physical principles. So we can get, typically, we expect Sabami 3.3 to have, uh, 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 even if you account, uh, discount the, um, the improvements in the silicon process technology, we expect uh, combining the, the thermal effects, better energy control, and so forth, we have some preliminary uh, uh, results that we published in which we uh, the, we uh, we can attain up to uh, factor almost factor of two better uh, power energy efficiency as compared to Tsubame 2 by combinations of all these properties you know the cooling and also smarter uh, control of the machine so factor of two you may argue factor of two may be small but you know but but you know that's you can keep your machine to be half as large, or you can you know, procure a machine that's twice as large, and that's uh, you know that's uh, that, I think that's a huge step forward. How hard will it be to swap out a board? Yes, well, that's a very good question, and that that's what that was one of the, the other experiment we did. So actually, we put a uh, we put a crane on top. This if this is contained in a container uh, in a in a. In a, in a like, uh, like a container, like a container data center. So we put a a crane on top, and, and we have a wire. And we have a wiring, and we have a scheme where we can just hook up the node and just you know, uh, just lift it up using a crane. Now it takes a little bit. Uh, takes uh, about 30 seconds to a minute to drain the oil, but after that it becomes serviceable. So we actually did an exercise of replacing all the. SS, well, actually adding SSDs to all the nodes because also, you know, judicious use of SSDs was part of the Swami 3 uh, uh, design. So uh, we lift, so we did, but we did this as a, as a post-mortem uh, addition to the already immersive nodes. So we did a measure, we did a model measurement and figured out what was the, the biggest overhead. It turns out the, the uh, lifting of the no, lifting of the nodes from the immersive condition, servicing and, and and again, immersing them in, uh, and reattaching the cables. The, the servicing part, actually attaching the disk, took about 18 minutes. But, but now lifting the nodes up and immersing only took about three to four minutes. So, um, of course, you have to take other measures, make sure you don't get oily, you know, oily floor. But um, uh, overall, this, uh, from the, uh, it was very successful improving that 
Now, immersive uh, uh, people may be worried about uh, serviceability of immersive technologies, but actually the service to overhead is quite small. And moreover, you get much better reliability by by these uh, immersion because you will get rid of more mechanical like uh, motion, like getting fans, and you even have no oxidization. So we believe that the total cost of servicing is overall on the unwitting side because of this. Yes. Okay. Thank you.